The views and opinions expressed by the host and our guest does not state or reflect Ramona personally or the life designing with Ramona Rogers podcast. This podcast takes a glimpse into the lives of women that despite life's obstacles and challenges, they have knocked down barriers and are succeeding in their chosen careers and in life. And today I have the pleasure of having Dr. Veronica Watkins Babers in the studio today. How are you feeling today, Dr. Babers? I'm wonderful. <laughs> I love that introduction. <laughs> I smile at that introduction. So thanks, thanks. It's great to be here today. Wonderful. Well, this podcast is all about taking a glimpse of the lives of the people who have, again, knocked down barriers and have risen to the occasion to become great in their uh, their areas of life. And so want to let people take a glimpse into your life. Oh, wow. <sighs> who is doctor? Who's the doctor? Where'd you come from? What's your, what's your background? Uh, what's my background? Okay, you want to start early on? I want to start with... Did you ever know that you will become a doctor? How about that? Let's start there. Um, so for me, I've always wanted to be either a judge or a lawyer. Uh, that was what I initially was wanting. Uh, but uh, I think it kind of transitioned to something else after I got in the workplace. Okay. So you're originally from? So I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I now reside in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so... From the beginning, I have always was a talker. So my parents always thought I would be, especially my dad. He always said, you're going to be either arguing something like a lawyer or a judge. Uh, so I think I always kind of thought I would take that path. But once I got into Booger T, I started thinking about p politics, government a little bit more and enjoyed those subjects. And so when I went to OU, Oklahoma University. Uh, I'm not so it'll be interesting to see where I ended up. Where I'm not a mathematician by nature, and so I really like the analysis part and understanding it and reading and discussing. So I ended up in uh, public administration. Okay, had never heard of public administration until at OU. So at Oklahoma University, I had a program. They said it's a mixture of government administration in a little math. So that was like, okay, that's great. Uh, so it was three fourths of that. And then I had a little of the economics and math. Um, so I ended up in their uh, program, public administration program, which it was one of a, the newer programs that was, they started in the, most people were getting poli sci or poli, uh, I forgot what they call it back then, but we, the name we called it was poli sci. So I ended up going through that program with a small cohort of people. Um, at that time, Dr. Carnavale came from the, I forgot where he came from, but he was one of the chairs and really enjoyed uh, his classes. And so I knew I wanted to go on to get a master's in public administration. Okay. And it, so do you want all of how I got to where I am now? So or you, you want to snapshot? Edge, so a snapshot of, and then you did from... University of Oklahoma, you did. So, uh, and I forget about this, but my husband and I were in uh, San Francisco this last uh, year, and I saw a lady with Carnegie Mellon shirt on. I was like, I went to Carnegie Mellon. I forgot about that. <laughs> so I, I spent a summer in Pittsburgh at Carnegie Mellon as part of the Woodrow Wilson Foundation program. Okay. And so going through that, if you pass that, then you get a fellowship for a Woodrow Wilson fellowship to a, a graduate program. So if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have been able to take my next step. Which so that's a very vital step that I told uh, my husband at the point, I need to start wearing paraphernalia from Car Carnegie Mell Mellon because you had to take, it was an intensive summer course. It was like people from all over minorities. Uh, I met some great people from, um, Lincoln University, when I think of those people, I thought it was pretty interesting. I'm going to have to look on Facebook to see where they are, but uh, met some great friends. Um, we stayed in t contact through all of us going to graduate school, taking advantage of the fellowship to go to graduate school. 
Most of them, some went to NYU. I went to Syracuse. Some went to University of Texas in Austin. Uh, that was wow. an option. Uh, but I took Syracuse because that was closer to my brother. So once you finish that, you finish that intensive course for the summer in Pittsburgh. They did a little bit of tour in the city at the beginning, but for the most part, we were in classes. Uh, and we took some, in, a lot of, Carnegie Mellon is a more of a, I think, a scientific mathematics school. Uh-huh. So that was pretty intense. Um, so we had those type of courses there. And then we, I got a choice. And I had a mentor who got me in this program. He was, uh, he's, He's a PhD doctor too, as well, Kevin McPherson. So if you ever hear this, shout out! I call him my big brother. Uh, he really pushed me to it. In order to be eligible for it, I had to take eighteen hours and twenty-one hours my last two semesters. Wow! And so my summer, my senior year, I was just taking classes so I could get my fellowship. So he was in Syracuse, finishing up the Maxwell School of. Uh, public citizenship. If I say this wrong, sorry, everyone, but it's in Syracuse. It's the number one program in the United States. And so he gave me the pros and cons of why I should go there. And then uh, another pro was that my brother was at Cornell University, Ithaca, and it wasn't, you know, you think it's not too far, but it, it was a drive. So I was able to be close to my brother okay. uh, for a little period because then the overachiever he is, <laughs> laugh, 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 clap, clap, clap. Whoever know him, he ended up studying abroad. So he was gone the second semester. Wow. So I was oh, actually there, there <laughs> by myself. But the first semester, he and I got to hang out a little bit. I would go see him play football, uh, drive down, took a couple of my friends. I think mm-hmm. he came up a few times and he was my uh, co driver driving back and forth to Tulsa, but then he's decided to study abroad his second semester. So I was there by myself and hmm. I was there for 18 months. By um, yourself. <laughs> by my, well, so the first semester he was there. So the mm-hmm. second semester okay. and the Wasn't summer, <laughs> yeah, I was there by myself. So I was glad he was there through the transition of the first semester. I think it would have been a little harder if I would have been there the whole entire time. So I was there Love Syracuse, but they have this, what they call lake effect snow. It snows like rain up there. Wow. (laughs) And uh, I would call my mom crying uh, because I've never seen anything like this. You have the umbrellas like for rain, but it was for snow. Wow. And so Ramon, my brother, was used to it. And uh, he was like, that's just part of where you are. It's different than everyone thinks when I say Syracuse is New York City, but it's totally different. Syracuse reminded me of a larger Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. So it's central New York. Uh, enjoyed it. They don't really have a summer. So during the spring and the summer, I thought, I think I'll stay this way. But my mom, she said, don't forget it. My dad, you cried during the winter. I don't know if that's a good idea because you couldn't handle Staying up there during the summer, you cried talking about it. It rains like sn- the snow is like rain. And so uh, I've at that point, I decided to move back to Tulsa. So I'm hearing some themes throughout your conversation here, your, your history. <laughs> opportunity, yes. taking advantage of opportunity, being prepared to take advantage of opportunity and then knowing your truth to make a decision to not stay in a place that even though the prestige was there. It wasn't a good fit for you. So which one? So at which level? Well, opportunity and being prepared and open-minded as well to maneuver through those arenas where you were went by yourself, but you the doors were open, but it all prepared you for what you're doing now. Would you say that would be a true statement? Yeah, it, I think you're not overthinking it. I didn't overthink it. And I had some mentors. So I think that really helps the mentors too. Uh, And very supportive family. I think my mom was a little skeptical of me going that far as a young lady. Um, But my dad pushed us to do a little bit. If you can do it, you got a fellowship, go for it. Uh, So I think opportunity is good. I think support system is even better. And understanding that, this is part of the journey was definitely helpful. 
I think for most people, I didn't think about the end result. I just thought about this is another opportunity, like you're saying, to travel, to be in a different area, to meet new people. And I I think when someone tell you 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 have a you've been accepted into the number one uh school for this area, MPA, Master of Public Administration, you have to step out definitely and try it. For me. <laughs> for me, I don't know if anyone I could have there could have been a safer. I did get into uh University of Texas, but that was a longer their program's a two-year program mm-hmm. and um it's broken out a little bit different whereas uh Syracuse was a straight 18 months. Cool. Well, and I'm thinking I didn't mention what what your title is right now. You are the budget director of Dallas County. Would so I'm a bu- <laughs> the budget officer. It's the one of the directors, appointed directors uh for Dallas County, yes. Uh so I didn't in, so I think what you're saying is being open to that is definitely important to know that you can instead of saying why me is like, why not me? Most definitely. If not now, then when? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's the, important. Those questions that you don't, the hardest thing is asking the right questions and to answer them in order to get to where you need to be. So moving forward with... How long have you been in your current uh, position or or with Dallas County? So, wow. So my current position, I think it would be a full two years in July of this year. Uh, but I've been with Dallas County, County over 18 years. So you've kind of moved up the ranks in that, in that arena. Yes. Uh, so I started off as a budget analyst then I went to a senior policy analyst, then assistant budget officer, and now the budget officer. Are you the first female that has ever had that position? So there is a little, not technically. Uh, so there was someone, my boss uh, retired in March, wait, March. And then there was an, a person that was hired in his place. Uh, she started African American, but she uh, was only there for a short period of time. Um, and so, from that point, once she uh, took an opportunity at another place, uh, I was promoted to the position. So she was there for maybe um, two months, in between my boss and I. So technically, yeah, for the long period, but she was the first African American that I know of. And I will have to check to see if it's the first female. Okay. And you just said something. She was the first. So did they hire her from the outside in order to come in there? Or by right, should that position have gone to you? Was it a any type of political things going on inside that? So for me, I try not to get into all of that because um, what God has for me is for me. And so for me... I love my job and I have been there. I enjoy what I do enjoy. Our department touches everyone, uh, every uh, department, anything with budget allocation and appropriation. So she was hired from the outside because at that point, after having someone in that position for 20 years, the idea was you need to bring a fresh new look. Um, But she didn't last or she had another opportunity. So after that, uh, I think for the most part, it was like, Hey, do you want to do this? This is something we want you to take on. And I'm like, sure, whatever I can do, because I think for the most part, all of, uh, my bosses are, uh, are spiritual. And so they believe too, what <laughs> God orders your step and everything's going to work out for you. Good. So like what you think, if it wasn't for that person, then it wasn't understand how I would fit in the position. Wonderful. (laughs) You have had a journey and in the midst of all that, you still got your doctorate degree. Oh yeah. I, um, I tell you that it was a lot of work and a lot of focus. (laughs) And so it, it didn't happen overnight. So that's why when people tell me they, how, how did I do what I do? A lot of work, a lot of focus, 
a lot of starting and stopping. I never quit. But during that period, uh, my father died. So I did take a, which is was heartbreaking. And so I did take a break from, you can't not, not be in school. So I took a break mentally, uh, still enrolled, still paid, <laughs> but I took a, uh, I think I forgot what they call it, but you still pay for it. And then, um, other challenges occurred and then, and so I took another break, you know, personal stuff happened maybe a couple of years, but my dad was the most, uh, De- something that was devastating that just mentally wasn't there for a while, but he was my biggest focus to get across the, across the finish line too. So at the end, I kept hearing him saying to me, you can do it. Uh, this is what you're supposed to do, baby girl. And then he's proud of me. So that was in, and I think me and my husband had a breakdown moment on our way to the graduation. He could see my face. And then I just broke out crying because it was real. I did it. And I said, my daddy's not here to see me. And he just hugged me and I just boohoo cried. Although my family was on their way down, it was just a moment I wish he could have seen because it was something we talked about before he passed. Um, So I would say that's a big thing. Uh, You got relationship issues that take you (laughs) north and south. And so Mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally, I checked out a couple of years in some um some relationships and then my oh and then um i uh, did a topic that wasn't a good a dissertation topic that i couldn't get the data and based on my committee felt that it may be a little bit something i was trying to do something with truancy and um adolescent males and trying to get that data okay. was really difficult in trying to get a uh, urban in urban areas Mm -hmm. and when you're dealing with adolescents it's a little bit more challenging so uh after i did my proposal the suggestion was for me to go back and figure out if it's a better way so that was devastating because i had spent like three or four years working on the proposal after all of these other challenges and obstacles and i cried because literally in my car because i'm like this is hard because Hey, I put all my energy and time in this yes. and me and my chair, literally, we uh, went back and forth in our committee meeting. We weren't on the same page. And so it was they said, we think you guys probably need to go back and talk about this. And um, but he became my biggest advocate. So I will say that at the end. But he wanted me to go. And I saw what he was trying to get me to do. But in that instance, I really didn't listen. And okay. so so I Again, checked out for another year and a half, uh, paid uh, for a little break. Uh, and then, I don't know if you want to hear all these stories, but I'm well, telling you. I'm going to I'm gonna even pivot in, into, so you got you the budget director and you've had all this education that has allowed you to elevate to this this level of what you are right now. But in the midst of all that, you're an entrepreneur as well on the side yeah that that gives me um another outlet it's really important to have other outlets too and it's not necessarily for the f- money i do it because it gives me another mm, something totally different in what i do and it gives me it helps me to reset mentally it's kind of like when people exercise mm-hmm. that's what i do too on the other side so what is it what is your entrepreneurial uh, endeavor that you actually do so uh you know, God's masterpiece t-shirts is I do consultant work too. Um, for, excuse me, for different people as well. Um, but now what I'm working on and been working on for the last 10 to 12 years is I do, uh, novelties, t-shirts, anything empowering women. It started off empowering women, but it's, uh, expanded to anyone, kids. Um, uh, and it's called God's masterpiece. Okay. That's a pow- powerful, powerful name <laughs> for yeah, business. And it, it's uh, it, in the piece is P-E-A-C-E instead of P-I-E-C-E. Okay. And it comes from the scripture uh, that you make God's masterpiece. And don't put me on the scribe. It's Ephesians something. <laughs> okay. um, but I'll have to get that for you. 
That's awesome. So you are budget director, but and I'm saying director, and you said officer. So That's the title, one, but so the director, one? the director is the same thing. Okay, you do that. You have a staff as well that you mentor in. Would that be correct? You have a staff. How big I is your staff? Staff of uh, eight. Okay, you have a staff, and then to keep your balance, you have your entrepreneurial endeavor. And then not only that, you also have recently became a podcaster. Yeah. And that's another piece. It gives, it's a reset for me. Also, I enjoy doing that because it's another outlet. It's totally different than what I do every day. So you're actually getting to show and display all these many facets of Veronica, Veronica, who she is in, in different areas and on different levels. Yeah, and I and one of my staff told me they said um, they be, they see that when you're pushed into something, kind of pushed into my new position and role, and you I figured out my lane there. I think it kind of when you open yourself up to that, it opens you up to other opportunities as well, because you don't just. I think we limit ourselves in what we can do, and so for me, the podcast. Uh, evolved organically and so through conversation through someone not pushing me but saying I think you'll be good at this why don't you try it and then that's how I came about wonderful wonderful give her a add a girl and I think up on that she's doing so much so many amazing things around uh, her life and things that she do so Ronica what would you tell what advice would you have wished someone told you or would you tell your younger self? Mm, my younger self, I would say, enjoy the moment. Enjoy where you are. Don't compare yourself to other people because we're all fearfully uniquely made. Going back to uh, how we came about with my girlfriend and I started the God's Masterpiece years ago. Uh based on that we're all uniquely made and don't compare yourself with social media the way it is. I think young ladies have a harder time than we had growing up, but I think you look at what you think is good. I think you think what is good. And then at the end of the day, you have to figure out what your lane is and stay in your lane. Don't try to get in anyone else's lane. That is awesome information for anyone to listen to and hear because, yes, social media is definitely it could be good. But today is kind of a downfall if you don't know who you are, have those attributes that are embedded into you and to know what your path is and where you're going and where you're headed. So you that that comparison thing really comes into place. But as you are continuing to maneuvering in this space of yours, what is your. 2022 big thing or goal that you have my goal is to from a personal standpoint uh just to continue to grow and be open uh, for new things um from a professional it's just be open try new things be more my position i touch every department i really try to listen to everyone and understand, but be more, uh, it was surprising, but be more confident in my decision. I can't be a people pleaser. It's something I've in my new position. I know I can't because it's like a checkbook in a household. You can't give everybody the money. Or it's going to go to zero pretty quickly. <laughs> so that's the same thing I've, I've figured out with different, uh, d departments. we got to prioritize and figure out how to best manage Dallas County, uh, from a personal standpoint, uh, me and my husband have some personal goals, um, uh, that we're looking at and then just enjoy life. Enjoy every moment as we, uh, move through this journey. Wow. What an amazing person to be in front of Dr. Ronica Watkins Babers 
is doing it. She is a good example, a great example of women and how you can maneuver life and take opportunities as they come. And so we appreciate you stopping thank by you, with you, all you. the things you. that you got going on uh, to, to break, grace us with your presence. And so uh, thank you. And thank you guys so much for joining us for an episode of Life Designing with Ramona Rogers.